Hey, what's up everybody? This is CLS All in One. In today's video, I'll show you how to make a greenhouse tent for a garden bed box. And if you want to learn how to make a garden bed out of treated wood, be sure to check out my video link in the description down below. So this greenhouse tent is fairly easy to make once you understand the basics of how it assembles. It's made out of a white PVC pipe for the frame and a 4 mil clear plastic for the cover. The length of this tent frame can be custom made to whatever length you choose, and the width can range anywhere from 2 to 8 feet wide, but the height will vary depending on the width of the frame. The greenhouse tent I'm building today measures at approximately 9 feet long by 5.5 feet wide by 30 inches tall, and I will list all the materials used to build this in the video description down below. And here is a quick look at most of the materials I used for this build. A hasp, PVC glue, hinges, screws, 4 mil clear plastic, strips of wood lattice, 1 inch PVC pipe, and various 1 inch PVC fittings. Now before we get started, I would like to mention that most of the measurements shown in this video are size specific for my greenhouse tent. So when you're building your own, you'll want to adjust the measurements to match the size of the greenhouse tent that you prefer. So to start with, I will cut 12 2 inch pieces of 1 inch PVC pipe. To cut the pipe, a hacksaw works great, or you can use a chop saw with a fine tooth blade as shown here. And here is a general outline of how the frame assembles. The middle portion represents the top of the frame, and the outside portions represent the bottom of the frame. The top of the frame includes two three-way T's and one four-way cross, along with six 45-degree angle corners. The bottom of the frame includes eight three-way T's and four 90-degree corners. And I will use the 12 2-inch pieces I cut to assemble most of these fittings together. With this greenhouse tent, I will be assembling it in a manner so I can take it apart and store it when it's not in use. So for now, I will only glue just the smaller fittings together, but I will wait to glue the three-way tees on the bottom that will eventually connect to the top, and I'll explain this more as I go. And if you're not sure which fittings should be glued or assembled together, I would recommend to just cut everything first, then assemble the frame without any glue to make sure everything looks right. Then at that point, you can go ahead and glue the fittings together. But you will want to make sure to prime the ends of the pipes and fittings first. Then after the primer dries, you can go ahead and apply glue to both sides. Then press the fittings together. But make sure all the corners and angles are in the correct position before the glue sets and the fittings become non-movable, which sometimes is a matter of just seconds. And here's a look at everything I've done so far. So most of these fittings have been glued together for the top portion of the frame, but on the bottom portion, I'm leaving the three-way tees loose for now. Now, I will go ahead and lay out my tape measure to a little over nine feet, then begin laying out the fittings for the bottom portion of the frame. So right here, I have the four 90-degree corners laid out at nine feet wide, along with a three-way tee next to each corner, and two more sets of three-way tees located in the center at four and a half feet. And with all these fittings, I'm overlapping them by one inch because when I glue them together, they will press together about one inch. Now that I have all my fittings laid out for the bottom of the frame, I will go ahead and measure the distance between the fittings and make some marks on the pipe that I will be cutting. And if everything is centered properly, you should end up with four pieces that are the same length. For mine, they ended up being 46 inches long. Now I will go ahead and press everything together without using glue because I want to make sure all the angles line up good before I glue any other fittings in place. Next I will lay out my tape measure the other direction for the width, which is five and a half feet. Then I will spread these two sections of the bottom frame apart five and a half feet, then measure the distance between them and cut three pieces the same length, which will be 62 and a half inches. And now I will go ahead and press these cut pieces together with the two sections. And after pressing everything together, the bottom of the frame now measures nine feet by five and a half feet wide. And again, I'm gonna to wait to glue anything else together until I get all the angles lined up properly. 
Next, it's time to grab one of the T's or cross from the top portion of the frame and line it up with the center of the bottom of the frame. Then I will measure the horizontal distance between where the angle begins on the top over to the edge of the bottom of the frame, which on mine is approximately 30 inches. Then with this measurement, you can use a right triangle side and angle calculator to figure out the rest of the measurements as shown here. Since the top corner angles are 45 degrees, I will go ahead and match the bottom with the same angle. Then if I type 30 inches in for side B measurement, it will automatically show me the remaining measurements. So this calculator shows me that the top of the frame or side A will be 30 inches high. And the distance on side C from top to bottom will be 42.43 inches. So I need six pieces of pipe cut at this measurement, but I can go ahead and round this up to 42 and a half inches and that'll work just fine but it would be a good idea to just cut two pieces to start with, then do a test fit to ensure everything fits, then continue on. And during this step, you will probably need to adjust the bottom three-way tees to match the 45 degree angle at the top, which can be done just by twisting the tee. And this step is one of the main reasons I like to wait to glue these fittings. Then once I have these sections installed and plumb, I then measure the distance between each section then cut two more pieces of pipe. And because there is a slight two inch offset on the top of the frame due to the bottom three-way tees being centered, one of the sides is two inches shorter than the other. So I have one piece cut at 46 and a half inches and the other piece cut at 48 and a half inches. So at this point, once the frame is assembled and everything looks good, you can go ahead and start taking the fittings apart, then start priming and gluing everything back together. But if you want to be able to take it apart, and store it in smaller sections like I will be doing, you can pick and choose which fittings you'd like to glue. Then with the fittings that are not glued in place, you can use some self-tapping screws to secure the fittings together. And I like to use at least one screw on each side of the fittings. And here's a look at the frame after completing the assembly with mainly the smaller sections glued together and the larger sections just screwed together. And I would recommend with a frame such as this to not exceed much over eight feet wide because the structure of the one inch frame becomes weaker as the span increases. And as far as the length goes, you could probably make this up to about 20 feet long, but you'd have to add an extra center support within every four feet. And the longer the tent frame becomes, it may take two people to lift it as well. Now I will show you a quick demonstration of taking the frame apart for storage purposes. So I've already removed the screws and now I will use a rubber mallet to tap the fittings loose, then take apart. And here's what it looks like when disassembled. So this will be much easier now to store when greenhouse season is over. As far as the strength of the frame goes, I feel it's plenty strong enough for just seasonal use and it's able to support a decent amount of weight as well. And here's what the frame looks like on my garden bed box. The bottom of the frame lines up with the top of the box just like it should. Now it's time to install the cover. This is a four mil clear plastic that comes in a 10 by 25 foot roll, which is plenty big enough for this tent frame. During this step, it will be much easier if you have a helper that can hold one side of the plastic because the plastic will need to be pulled fairly tight. To secure the plastic to the frame, I'll be using some strips of wood lattice along with one inch self-tapping screws. Once I have the plastic in place with at least one foot overhang on each side, I then make sure the plastic is somewhat square with the frame. Then I roll the edge of the plastic onto the wood strip, then staple it in place with quarter inch long staples about every three inches. Then with someone holding the plastic in place on the opposite side, I begin rolling the wood strip and plastic tightly until it's even with the bottom of the frame. Then I will use a one inch long self tapping screw to secure the wood strip to the bottom of the frame with a screw at every one foot going across. Then I repeat the same steps on the opposite side. And again, you'll want to make sure the edge of the plastic and wood is square with the frame. Otherwise, when you roll it up, it will not line up even with the bottom of the frame. When rolling up the plastic, you will want to make sure it stays tight and somewhat wrinkle free and you might have to pull on the side edges as well to keep everything tight. So this side is just about done. I just got a couple more screws to drive. 
And now it's time to move on to the front side. So the front and back is a little bit more difficult to do. It requires folding the plastic in a triangular pattern that is somewhat similar to wrapping a present. After folding the plastic, I then cut off any excess there may be, making sure to make a nice straight line with at least one foot of plastic sitting past the edge of the frame. Then I staple the edge of the plastic to the wood strip, then begin rolling the plastic tightly until it's even with the bottom of the frame. Then I secure the wood to the frame with the same one inch self-tapping screws. And for the plastic on the last remaining side or the back side, I just repeat the same exact steps. Now it's time to place the greenhouse tent in position. To secure the tent to the garden box, I'll be using some three inch strap hinges along with some two inch long screws, but optionally, you could also use some bolts and nuts. The hinges will just sit centered between the box and the tent with the three inch strap facing down. Then I secure the hinges with screws on the box side first. Then on the tent side, I pre-drill some holes first that run all the way through the pipe. Then I secure the top of the hinge with the same two inch screws. The screws end up being a little long and pop through the other side, but because the screws are secured on both sides of the pipe, it provides a much stronger mechanical bond. And now with these hinges installed, I'm able to open up the tent all the way to the ground. To protect the tent plastic from the ground when completely open if needed, you can just use a block of wood as shown here. To secure and latch the opposite side, I just used a medium sized hasp along with a spring clip lock. And I was able to attach this to the tent frame using the same routine I used for the hinges. So this greenhouse tent is now ready for use just the way it is. But optionally, you could make a prop to hold the tent up as shown here. So what I have here is a chunk of aluminum that is 3 16ths of an inch thick by one inch wide by four feet long that I have drilled a hole through at the top and bottom. Then at the bottom of the box, I've attached a large bolt for the prop to secure to, along with a small cotter pin to lock it in place. Then at the top, the prop is secured with a medium sized bolt that is not fully tightened, which allows the prop to pivot. And to hold the prop in place when not in use, I installed another bolt towards the end of the frame with a small hole drilled through the middle of it so a cotter pin can lock the prop in place. And here's an example of how it works. First, I remove the cotter pin so the prop can drop. Then I remove the spring clip on the hasp, then raise the greenhouse tent, then slide the prop over the bolt on the bottom of the box and lock it in place with the cotter pin. So here's a look at the almost finished product. I still have to add a bunch of garden soil to the inside of this box, but that will be at a later point. Okay, it's now time for me to go. If you liked this video, if you could hit that like button and please subscribe. And have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.